Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 30. In this tutorial we are going to create our second floor and we're going to link everything together as well as linking in that splash screen that we created a couple of tutorials ago. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else on game development on my channel. If you've enjoyed this series so far please feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, basically, because we've completed what we have now for floor 1 or level 1, whatever you want to call it, we could actually theoretically use this as a base and make a completely different level with the same mechanics and save ourselves a ton of time rather than building a level from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my scenes here and I'm going to take level 001, which is this one, and hold control, press D. We've now created a duplicate. So let's head into there and make sure we do go into the correct scene. So you'll see at the top here, we're still in level 001. So make sure we go into level 002. You'll notice it is the exact same level. So a couple of things that we're going to have to do first and foremost is just make a couple of little alterations to the game. So firstly let's add our gun straight in because we already picked it up on floor one so we know we're going to be uh, we're, we're going to have it here so we don't need to worry about it too much at all for now. Next thing we need to do is change in our canvas the actual UI panel down the bottom and we have floor panel and in here we have floor label or floor level I should say and that should be two so when we press play now we should see we have our gun ready and we're on floor two so to give you a quick rundown of how this can be done and one thing I am going to do is to quickly turn off my post processing and that can be done. I should have mentioned it last tutorial but kind of ran out of time but uh, this one yeah the menu here click post processings and it will turn it off and you can see everything back in the original view however that doesn't mean that when you press play the post processing is off it still means it's on. So what I'm going to quickly do uh, while I explain what we're going to do with the rest of this uh, tutorial is I'm going to open all this up and basically build another section here. I'm going to keep most of the floor the same but obviously you shouldn't. You should probably take a lot more time and build different sections of your levels simply because you don't want them repeating. I'm just doing it this way to kind of give uh, the impression of it's a different um, floor or level. Again, whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do is in our original floor that we created, we are going to add a script at the end, which will take us to this floor here, rather than linger at the uh, end screen. Because obviously we want to progress the game. We want to carry on further. We want to do whatever. So at this point, what I would recommend is you take the time and build yourself uh, whatever floor you need. And if you feel it necessary to build floors three, four, five, six, whatever, you should probably do that as well. Take the time to do so. So uh, I'm going to just basically have the level starting here where I am now. Again, just to kind of give a sense of, oh, it's a little bit different. And nearly done. Two more of these. And I'm sure I've mentioned it before in this series, don't worry about the amount of objects that you're placing down, simply because, again, this style of game just will not require a lot of resources, so you're not wasting any resources at any point. So that's that done, and like I said, all I'm going to do is bring my FPS controller over here. So I'm going to pretend that the start of floor two is this little corridor here. So let's bring it this way, and rotate it around 90 degrees. Oh. Minus 90 LB, so we face that way. So that's the beginning of floor two, and let's save that there. Next thing, let's go to our file and build settings and click on add open scenes. So we've got level two right there. Now, what I'm going to do is keep uh, level one as scene two, simply because we have already have the ability to uh, basically get to this scene via our level recycle. So for now, I'm keeping everything as it is and we just have to remember that scene four is basically the second scene the second floor so 
Let's head back to level 001, and when we do, we should see this section completely disappear. So now they are definitely defined as two different levels. And we're going to create uh, a little something extra in the script, which is here. So if I can get to the object there, so floor complete, we need to go into that floor complete script. So we're going to now modify this to perhaps um, wait for 15 seconds, then we go on to the next floor. Uh, but in doing so, we're also going to need using Unity Engine. Oops, did not mean to actually close that then. Did not mean to do that. Unity Engine dot scene management. And when we've completed the floor, that's all good and well. So let's just quickly run through this again. We stop the timer, start the co-routine, stop the player from moving fade out and then we display the complete panel so then yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets let's say 15 and after that we will say scene manager dot load scene for semicolon and save so there is a little bit more to this. We have to theoretically think about how we're going to do this. And essentially you can kind of repeat this process over and over and over for every subsequent level. Um, you can actually have a file containing various different uh, aspects, but there are a couple of things as well that we're going to need to do. When we get to a new floor, we are going to need to, um, let me think, are we going to need to reset anything? Because we want to carry our ammo over, don't we? Um, we want to carry our lives over and we want to carry... Um, yeah, okay, so we'll reset the score. Um, at least for now, just to give us another sense of uh, something is occurring. And it is global score dot score value equals zero semicolon. And we're also going to need to reset uh, the treasures and the enemies. So global, um, gosh, which one is it? Do you know what? I cannot remember. Is it global complete that has it in? It is. So we need to reset the enemy count and treasure count. So global complete dot enemy count equals zero just so we have the score set for the next level and same with global complete dot treasure count equals zero semicolon and save so as it stands now when we get to the end after 15 seconds we can see our score see whatever we need to we'll go to our next level so let's quickly try that out you'll see what i mean now with the post processing still active it's still there for us. So I'm going to kind of run through this. Actually. I'm not going to try and shoot the enemies. Let's try and make this as painless as possible. There's our key. Let's go to the end of our level. And there we go. Excellent. So you could... Uh, if you wanted to, have a button here to do the exact same sort of thing. Uh, we went through buttons in main menu, so you could quite easily just put a button here to take you to the next level if you wanted to. And there we go. We are now floor two. Excellent. So yeah, it is all the same here, but we're definitely in that separate scene now because we've started here. So how is the game going to flow? So that is the big question that we have to think about now. We've set this floor complete script to basically say always reload scene four. And the best way we can uh, do this now is scene four is going to be level um, two. And what we could do every subsequent level is to add in uh, an extra scene. Now, what you need to do at this point is try to understand how many scenes you're going to want to need in your game. And it's important at this point. So let's go to file. Let's go to build settings. And we have these scenes. We have the sample scene, which is our 
a simple you know screen that pops up at the beginning or uh i forgot what it's called splash screen <laughs> then we have the level recycle then we have level two uh level sorry level one uh, level two and main menu so what i would like to actually add at some point is a credit scene so i'm going to make a dummy scene for now for the credits so file and new scene and file save as and let's call this credits in the scenes folder save we'll come back to this in another tutorial because the credits aren't exactly important right now uh, but what we do need to do is add it to the build settings and i actually want to set this as scene four and i want scene five onwards to be every subsequent floor so five will be two Scene six will be three, scene seven will be four, and so on. So five is a key number that we need at this point. And we need to basically make the game think, rather than have a script for every single level, we need to basically say, go to the next level, no problem. So let's head to floor zero one again. Come on, Unity. Come on, there we go. So to do this, we need to create another script and this script is real simple. Uh, let's go to stats again and we will go to, in fact, I think about it, do we really? I'm thinking we'd actually do it in global complete rather than a separate script. And I'm actually gonna have this as public static int and we'll call it next floor semicolon and next floor is going to be the level we go to so by default we're going to make it five so save that script let's head to the floor complete and what we'll do is instead of having load scene there we'll have global complete dot next floor and do you know now i think about it I'm thinking let's actually set this as four. So it's looking at scene four for now. However, we will actually have global complete dot next floor just before we go to that scene plus equals one semicolon and save. So why have we done this? Well, if we're playing through this now, we have to remember that getting all the way up to here, this is still set as scene number four, which is currently the credits. It gets to here and then makes it scene five. So it loads scene five. So we're now playing through scene five. We've got to the end and we're yep, still in scene five. But then this is saying next floor is scene six. So then we load scene six. So you can see it's a sequence of events once again, which helps it realize what the next level is. And that is the easiest way of creating a scene, uh, or rather a script that um, enables the game to know which scene to go to next it's real simple so where do we go from here well we could actually put this in scene two and it will go to six so you'll be able to create all your subsequent levels quickly and easily from there so let's link that splash screen to um, the main menu so to do that let's go to our splash screen which is right there sample scene and we need to create a script in here which takes us to uh, main menu after, let's say, five seconds. So in the scripts, uh, right click, create C sharp script, and we'll put splash to menu. Let's open that up in Visual Studio now. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks for that error. So at the top, we obviously need to use using unity engine dot scene management semicolon and we get rid of update and the annotations because we don't need them and it's going to be done via coroutine so i enumerator and let's call it load menu open close bracket open curly bracket and we'll go yield return new wait four seconds brackets five semicolon and we'll say scene manager dot 
load scene and it's gonna be is it three i can't remember let me quickly check build settings it is three i was right close bracket semicolon last thing to do is start the coroutine start coroutine and the name of that coroutine load menu oh close bracket close bracket semicolon save and then attach that script anywhere Let's create a new game object i guess <laughs> and then attach it splash to menu so if we press play now there's our splash screen and we should load to menu now there we go and let's go new game And we should load up level 01. And there we go. So the whole sequence of this is now coming together very, very nicely. And I'm quite pleased with how it is flowing. Again, I always say you should take a lot more time than what I do in creating some of these things. I'm quick because I want to get through these tutorials instead of wasting your time when you could be spending that time making some awesome levels. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to look at something called player prefs. And player prefs are a way of us being able to save and load the game. So let's say we get to the end of floor one. We want to save it. So it's when we click on, so, you know, we close the game down and then we come back to it. And then when we click load game, we want to go to scene, uh, rather floor two. So player prefs allow us to save and load game. So we're going to look at saving uh, more than anything next tutorial. Until then, guys. Thank you very much for watching.